Hey folks, this is Iowa Ether, and we're back with some more World Tanks. So as you can see, this is Ronic and AMX 1390. Woot! Uh, so I'm so happy to see another scout driver, especially since I know Ronic doesn't like scouts all that much. So this must have been an epic game. So already is communicating with his team. It's a tier nine game. There's artillery, a lot of artillery in it, and of course it's uh. Fisherman's Bay, that's one. I was gonna say Fisherman's Coast for some reason. It's, I don't know, whatever. So he's already knows where he's gonna get lights, and so he's going to rush there, get some lights, and then get out of there. There isn't too many places on this map you can do passive scouting unless you have afterburners on your vehicle. Um, well, mm, that's an interesting place to be. Not where I would be. Personally, I like to push through to the next line. Uh, yes, you have to be fast, but you can also get amazing spots off on everything. He, is, he managed to light the AMX uh, 5120 and the MO3, and I don't think he's going to light anything else. Nope, just not high enough on this hill to light anything else. Oh, that's an IS, and that is definitely close enough to spot him, except there's a bush there, so whoop. And IS gets a nail by something, and Ronick just kind of piles some more damage up on top, and so that th that poor IS just like, what just happened? As he is down to like a hundred health, less than <laughs> two minutes into this game. Now for some reason, we have an IS sitting at the middle of an open field. And we have a T29 trying to push the one line. Um, so folks, if you're ever in one of these top tier games, don't be all like, um, okay, the heavies need to go to the, the city and the mediums need to go to the 1-2 line. This is how this works. It's it's that way uh, for a reason. Don't try and like break the meta and, and go the opposite way. You will get yourself murdered before you can do anyth of anything of use. 5120 exposed there, but Ronick is reloading for another 8 seconds. Unfortunately, it looks like the AMX is probably not going to pop back out again. He doesn't like getting shot by whoever's hitting him. Oh, tried a snapshot on the E50 and missed. But the E50 apparently comes back in range, and for some reason that reticle isn't moving. Uh, though obviously you can see that he is actually shooting different people. So I don't know what was going on with this reticle right there, but... Oh, that was shot. Fired a whole touch early. If he waited just a touch more, he probably could have got into the side of the E-50 and it may have actually done some damage. But it doesn't matter because our T-28 blows up the E-50. And that poor guy thought he was about to get a jump on an AMX 1390, but that did not happen. So, reloading. As soon as he knows he's clear, great job. I like uh, I like the fact that he's moving as he's reloading. It's exactly what he needs to do. And there, now he knows where the IS is. He also knows where Patton is, so his team can get some shots in on them. And if the IS sticks around here, then eight seconds we can get another shot on him. And the IS I think just fired at us, but pulled back into cover before we could do anything about it. However, the 713 doesn't know we're here and he's going to take at least two shots if he... oh he's pulling back forward again so we can get him the third time and the fourth time and one more to kill him boom dead M103 and with ooh, one shot left in the clip we could have grabbed the IS but snapshots on auto loaders never turn out well and that one didn't either now he's reloading at a weird and I'm going to say it's a bad place to reload now yes, he's in cover, he's in a lot of soft cover, it's likely nobody knows where he is, but if the RD was looking at him before he started reloading, then a bomb could have dropped on while he was sitting here reloading. Unfortunately, we lost everybody on the city except for a T-28 prototype, and we lost everybody in the top ridge. So we have problems now. 
on the upside, I think we killed all the enemies in the city, except for the Patton, who's currently chasing um, Ronick around. On the downside, of course, I have a T-29 nobody spotted, who's who may be AFK, but then again, he may not be, right? Now going head-to-head -head with a Patton, manages to miss his first clutch shot, but the T-28 hits him. That's good, he's gonna wait for the patent fire and he's gonna pop out, do some serious damage, and boom, GW Tigers takes him out with some splash damage. So for some reason the reticle isn't uh, following Ronick's aim or uh, as the way it should. So I I don't know what that what's going on there. So apparently the T29 was pushing down the one two line, which means this entire line, side is completely free of enemies. So Rock is going to reload, and I personally would charge the uh, enemy artillery. The, this is three targets that are completely undefended and alone. If you can get them out of this game, it makes it will make this game much easier. In the meantime, our E50 and 7-1 were defending against the, the IS and T29. Unfortunately, we lost the E50. It looks like the 7-1, Centurion 7-1, is running probably going to get himself killed in a second or two. But we still have that T-28 prototype backing up the RD, so we're probably still okay. Nope, there's one artillery. He misses his one and only shot, and boom, dead RD player. Wait to reload, wait for a few seconds so Rock drops off the enemy's RD's radar, and then he's going to sneak around. Now, every time he runs through a, a gate, or a fence, he chose the arty where he is. So try and stop, not you know, don't knock over trees, don't run into fences when you're doing this kind of thing, and you're trying to be all defensive against arty. Now one of these guys is fired. I'm guessing it's not the seven, uh, the SU-14. Nope, SU-14 just fired. So the GW Tiger is out of aiming or reloading and the SU-14 is reloading. I don't know what the SU-14 was hoping to do, but it didn't work out for him. Now, unfortunately, we have lost everything except for a T-28 and a GW Panther. GW Tiger, sorry. So, Ronick is instead of getting really, really kill-hungry and going after that Tiger at the death run of his team, he's actually switching sides and he's going after the guy's attacking the T-28 and his own artillery. And he's going to jump up on this ridge right here, and he's going to have A, reloaded, and B, he's going to have clean shots at the back of these guys. Come on, that reload. Come on, reload. Come on. Boom. Dead. Okay, so now we know where one of them is. That's probably the T-29 on our cap. That's okay. No, it's not. It's a Panzer Souffle. Okay, well, that's fine, too. Ooh, that snapshot sadly missed. Boom. One more shot. Come on. Yeah, good job. So now there is a T-29 around here somewhere. But exactly where it is, we don't know. And it's probably over an A-2 still. It's probably where it is. But we're going to assume the key. I mean, it could be somewhere else. Personally... In this kind of situation, I go kill the enemy already and then come back. And the reason I do that is because the enemy already I know is alone and defenseless, whereas the the enemy T29 we know is up in A2, and he's probably gonna bunker down and make us come to him. And we don't really want to do that on his terms, especially not when he can spot us and light us up for ooh that guy. Now Ronick's down to only having six shells left. He's gonna have to juke this guy out. And if he keeps firing, then he's going to be in trouble. GW Tiger missed his shot and yeah, Ronick can take his time killing him. And now he could reload, but he'd only reload one more shell. Oh no, my bad. I didn't realize that the T29 had been killed by, I think it was the T28 prototype, uh, in the midst of all that. 
<laughs> that duel with the the GW uh, Tiger kind of focused my attention. I missed the, the T29 dying. So we won. Woot! With Ronak having two standard ammunition shells left. Wow. So, of course, this earned him 5,000 experience. The Ace Tanker, Pascucci's Medal, High Caliber, and, of course, the Top Gun. The Top Gun was really awesome. It's not something you get a whole lot in a scout tank, and they're always beautiful and, and you know, one of the prize times, well, memories, that's one. Prize memories in a scout tank. 4,124 damage dealt in a scout tank. More than our TD, <laughs> who did nothing but defend the entire game because the guys in front of him just kept dying. And so he just, he fell back and he defended and he defended and he did an amazing job. Our T28 deserves some, pro some props. Tomlin, he helped us win this game. Without him, this would have been an overrun and a defeat. Though Ronick probably would have survived with the way he was playing. Um, no, I don't feel like giving props to anyone on the enemy team. Hmm. 28 shots fired. With only... Wait, 28 shots fired. Hmm. I thought he... I don't know. Sorry, whatever. I'm trying to figure out how many shells he was carrying to begin with, but anyways, whatever. So 20 shot fired, 19 hit, yeah, so a few snapshots in there lessened his percentage of, you know, the ones he hit, but still, a whole bunch of spawning damage and a whole bunch of actual damage, so he did about, um, 6 to 7,000 damage was caused just by Ronick, and he was definitely the deciding factor in this game. Look at that. It only cost him 7 grand for as much damage and chaos as he caused. This is why I love playing scout tanks, guys. So much fun. Thank you so much, Ronick, for sending it in. Thank you for watching and hitting the like or subscribe button. I'll see you all next time. It's IOE Threat. Threat.